heard it in TV. My name's Anne-Margaret Crow. I'm one of the technology analysts at Edison Group. It's my pleasure today to be speaking with Mr. Yoav Stern, who is Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Nano Dimension, and with Mr. Julian Lederman, who is Director of Corporate Development at Nano Dimension. Nano Dimension is listed on NASDAQ. It has a market capitalization of around 620 million US dollars and it's focused on the global 3D printing industry. So gentlemen, welcome and thank you for being with us this morning. Now, Mr. Yoav Stern, I'd be very grateful if you could begin by telling us how Nano Dimensions additive manufacturing technology differs from traditional manufacturing technologies. Thank you. Okay, that is going back to basics actually, which is additive manufacturing, the other side of the formula is subtractive manufacturing. Traditional manufacturing takes material, subtract material from it, or takes a big piece of a material, like a sculpture takes a big stone, subtract and ends up with uh, the sculpture of David or Moses in Italy. Same for metal, same for wood, same for everything. This is a very wasteful way of influencing the environment and the nature by definition, plus it costs a lot if you start from a big stone or a big piece of metal. Additive manufacturing speaks about taking materials, changing their format to something that either liquid or uh, powders, and you build the product from the bottom up. You don't reduce materials, you add material, like you print a piece of, on a piece of paper, but that you print in two dimensions, you print a product in three dimensions by printing in layers. That's additive manufacturing. Thank you very much. And can you tell me how Nano Dimension applies these additive manufacturing techniques to the manufacture of high performance electronics devices? Sure, let's start with additive manufacturing electronics, which is a term which is relatively new a few years. We are talking about additive manufacturing as it's applied to electronic devices, which is actually more complicated as much as technology than relative, uh, re, re, regular additive uh, manufacturing, where you print certain material and produce three-dimensional entity from that material. In additive electronics, you print a component, including usually two materials, sometimes more, conductive, uh, non-conductive, dielectric, and you together print a, a unit that when you connect to the electricity afterwards, it works with electricity going through it. Very complicated, like a printed circuit board. You print a board or you print a cube. Thank you. And what about Precision additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing, precision additive manufacturing is like additive manufacturing, usually inject one material to create a part, but very high precision. Smaller part traditionally is with precision of one micron, which traditionally is not made uh, unless it's aimed at uh, very, very special and large industries like defense, avionics, aviation, aerospace, medical. So we call it precision for the specific attribute of very precise. Now, as much as the vision for us and those two, those two technologies and some more, by the way, in the additive manufacturing field are actually aimed at very, very similar verticals which I have mentioned. Defense, electronics, medical, aerospace, very advanced industrial, including very advanced automotive. Uh, of course, uh, research institute and uh, academics. So our vision is to create a network of additive devices, like edge devices like this, with a combined network on the cloud that will manage those devices and print what you need, where you need it, as you need it, in these five, six verticals. Thank you. So how does Nano Dimension differ from other companies in the 3D printed electronics market? 
Okay, the, a the AM industry is actually not a new industry. Probably as an industrial field, it goes back 20 years and grew dramatically, but a lot of promises, not a lot of deliveries, especially in the field of additive manufacturing used for actual production of mass production. Uh, the issues there are to do with the technology, but nowadays, in the last two, three years, the technologies and the materials developed a lot, and, and in a way, none of the mentioned in the forefront of it, when it started, was focusing in an area there was nobody doing, which is additive manufacturing electronics, as I explained in the previous question. Nobody is doing it, nobody is doing it. Then in the last year, we started to see people are doing it and advancing, which makes us very happy because people, it means people realized the uniqueness of how we positioned ourselves. However, since then, we expanded beyond just additive manufacturing electronics. We moved into other electronics machines and technologies that are additive in nature, but for instance, edit, adding components rather than adding material. And we expand into additive manufacturing, like the pre uh, precision additive manufacturing, which is the main primary technology, and, and everybody tells you different, in additive manufacturing is materials. Materials and process, and it doesn't go one without the other. If you change, or you want to change the materials, you have to change the process and vice versa. The materials is a real forefront of physical technology. The development of material is a slow process, takes many years, and to reach materials that have two main properties. A, they fit to be printed with, and B, they fit to serve as the final product with the properties for final product. It's only lately that the material development and research around the world uh, is reaching a point where the materials start to fit. That's very, very exciting. And we are, none of the mention, in the forefront of it because our material research is even more advanced. Not only that we need materials that fit these two properties, which is printable and serving as a physical product. We also need materials that work as electronic materials, dielectric, conductive, so we are really on the forefront out of 170, 180 engineers, PhDs, in, and, uh, and uh, scientists. We have 35 chemists, physicists that focus in material and process. And that's where we differ from the others. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to turn to Mr. Lederman. Uh, Mr. Lederman, you head up Nano Dimensions team that's focused on M&A activity. So it would be great if you could tell me what is Nano Dimensions acquisition strategy? Our M&A strategy is driven by two main pillars. One is technology, the second is commercial. On the first, technology, it's about acquiring hardware, software, and material science companies that can really advance us in our R&D roadmap with those three areas being critical to being successful in our business. On the commercial side, it's about acquiring, uh, I would say, successful, impactful businesses with strong history of customer relationships that are delivering products or services to the customers that we and them would share. These are the key verticals that we have around aerospace and defense, automotive, uh, electronics, medical, and industry, and, and lastly, R&D and academia. It's about selling more products and services to the same customers. With all that being said, a key thing that we're looking to apply to both businesses is AI. And this actually goes to our first acquisition of DeepCube, an AI, specifically deep learning company, where we're looking to bring that AI to either the technology or even the, to the commercial business to help them advance in their business and ultimately make better products or services. In terms of the M&A that we've done to date, We've done five acquisitions. Uh, DeepCube was the first company. That was a great example of a, of a technology, particularly in the software area. Uh, on the commercial side, we acquired a company called Admatech and Formatech. They make 3D printers and have a service bureau, again, to the strategy I alluded to earlier, serving those verticals that are our core to our business. Uh, another acquisition that's actually quite interesting because it checks both boxes, technology and commercial, is SMTech. They're, uh, in essence, a robotics company or a surface mount technology company. They have over 2,000 customers, so they definitely check the commercial box. 
and then they have a, their technology and their robotics is something we'll be integrating into our future systems. Uh, how has that impacted our business? In 2021, we are a revenue of about $10 million for the year. And in 2022, if you take our run rate for where we are, we expect to be over $40 million. So that's over four times growth in, in year in year on revenue. And a lot of that is coming from commercial synergies, technology synergies, and then using uh, our AI to help drive our business forward. Thank you. It's very interesting. Now, so far, Nano Dimension has made several acquisitions, but they're relatively small. And you've got a cash pile of about a billion dollars. So can you tell me, is there anything happening in the market with respect to valuations which may accelerate the pace and the scale at which you are making acquisitions? I could say having, having been in this role for over 18 months now and, and looking at uh, many M&A opportunities in the hundreds now, uh, we could say that there's, we've learned a lot about what's out there, some great products and services. I would say for the first 12 months of being in this role, uh, coming in in 2021, valuations, I think as, as most investors know, as most of the market participants know, were incredibly high. This was the back of of COVID and some of the, the, the fiscal policies of governments that happened at the time. This was on the back of SPAC craze that also happened at the time. And I'm happy to say that in the last few months, valuations have really come into favor. And it's worth saying that a core part of our strategy is not just to do M&A, but to be prudent about the M&A that we're doing. We are trying to return ROI to our shareholders. We find it very hard to believe that that could really be done in a true and honest way if you were doing M&A at the levels that we saw in 2021 into most of 2022. Now that valuations are coming down, we see, value, we see opportunities increase many times fold. Companies that we were in discussion with 12 months ago, but we couldn't come to an agreement on valuations are now calling us and looking at us for a potential opportunity to work together. And this is very exciting. I wouldn't want to get into a situation where we promise a certain amount of M&A in the next three months, six months, 12 months. But all I could say is, is this probably some of the best times we've had in close to two years now to do M&A that will both transform our R&D roadmap, that will provide great commercial upside to our business, and most importantly, those two points together provide what we think is a very, very attractive ROI to our shareholders. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for your time. It's been very interesting speaking to you both today, and I look forward to speaking to you both again in the future.